Hey guys, it's Caleb from Pave Tool. I want to talk to you guys about the proper techniques to building a retaining wall. So as you can see here, we got our retaining wall. We have a base course in that is all buried. And most importantly, we are compacting in front of the, our base layer, making sure that you will not end up with any of those blocks sliding out from underneath the retaining wall and making sure that everything is set in stone. The SRV600 is a fantastic machine, has a lot of centrifugal force for a given small one foot by one foot foot, making it so that it has great ramming force. Bieber, company that makes this machine, strictly focuses on small equipment, which makes them the Cadillacs of the compaction equipment. Super crucial part in building a retaining wall is putting in drainage. As you can see here, we have our outlet which is connected to our quickie retaining wall spillway. We are going to now put in a perforated drain that goes behind here, collecting any of the water coming down the hillside from behind me and going out to the front of the retaining wall, kicking it out eight inches past the toe of that retaining wall. Now we're gonna compact behind this retaining wall. We're gonna then double check, make sure that we're pitching towards that drain and we're good to go. Now I'm getting a little bit more gravel behind here. When I compacted, it went lower than where my exit is. So I just want to make sure I pick that up, make sure the water's going out in front of the wall. So I'm going to get a little bit more gravel. You want to use some kind of structural fill, whether it is gravel like we're using here in this particular instant. Otherwise you can use like a sand or a fill material that compacts well does not hold moisture. You don't want clay behind your retaining walls. That will tend for a retaining wall to fail because that holds way too much moisture. It'll also rot the bottom block. So here we are making sure it's pitching. It's perfect all the way up through. We're good to go. We're gonna put in a perforated pipe now and then uh, we'll backfill with some open graded stone making sure it drains properly. When building a retaining wall, Doing step ups or when your wall steps up a hillside, it's always tricky. Trying to make sure you don't end up with any divots or dents in your wall. This application here, we're gonna be doing a step up. So what I usually do, I'll take my level, make sure that my base is pretty close to where I need to be. Right here, we're in real good shape. You wanna make sure that if you are pitching your blocks back a little bit, that you're not going back to front and front to back. You wanna make sure you're parallel with the face of your wall. So making sure that this is nice and level. So we're good to go here, nice and level. Sometimes you can also take our wall screed system. You can set a pipe with a laser on this side and screed off of that as well. That works awesome. Small step up like this, just four feet. I really don't mind just using a four foot level and it doing it by hand. Get it level. We're gonna hand tamp just a little bit. Just to get any of those bigger rocks down to the bottom. So when we're screeching a little bit of that number nine stone, we're not hitting it. Again, all this was already compacted with our SRV600, so it's fully compacted. A little bit of number nine stone. You can also use sand in an application like this. One of the big crucial parts when doing this is making sure that you do pad up your block with some stone or some sand, just that little bit, what happens is you put your first layers in, they settle down, and then you, when you do your second layer coming across here, if you don't put a little bit of sand there, this will settle down as well, so you'll end up with a little divot in your wall. You don't wanna see that. So again, putting a little piece stone on top of my wall. Perfect, I'm nice and dead level. Staying parallel with my wall. Now what I'll do 
is I'll clean off my P-stone off the face of this wall, top of this wall, existing. Clean this off real good. Now I'm ready to continue to lay our wall block. You're going to see a little bit of an imperfection to start with. As you keep building your retaining wall, there won't be any imperfection. It's going to be perfect every time. So here we are on this retaining wall project. We're getting everything backfilled here. As you can see, we have clean stone put behind the retaining wall. This allows for drainage. We also have pipe down the bottom, which I had previously shown. But now we are ready for our soil separator, either a tie par fabric or a geotextile fabric that allows water to seep through it and drain down behind the wall. So you're not holding any moisture or water behind your retaining wall. So Obviously, you can see here, lots of stone. Rule of thumb, usually ICPI or NCMA will tell you one foot of stone. I usually try to stick around two feet or three feet of stone. In an application like this, we're going to have landscaping and planting up top. So I make sure that I taper from the top of this wall down, allowing for plenty of soil to sit in here for our plants so they can be healthy. Thanks, guys, for watching this week's tip of the week. Hopefully you learned something about building retaining walls properly. Make sure to go to pavetool.com and sign up for the tip of the week. And also visit us on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Thanks for watching.